Hello everybody, it's Shrouded Hand here. Today I've got three disturbing cases involving animal attacks on humans. There's something that people find fascinating about being able to get up close and personal with a creature that has the potential to maim and kill you. Unfortunately, as we will see, sometimes these animals live up to their nature and it has tragic consequences. So I'll start with a fairly well known case, you might have heard of this before, the Travis the Chimp incident. On October the 24th, 1995, Sandra and Jerry Herald adopted a three day old chimp named Travis. They dedicated themselves to providing as much love and care as possible to the baby chimp. Then, after their daughter Susan died in a car accident in the year 2000, their love and affection for Travis increased tenfold. He sort of became a replacement for the daughter that they'd lost. As Sandra says, Travis couldn't be more my son than if I'd given birth to him. Travis wasn't just a pet, he was a family member. He joined them for family meals and outings. He took part in activities like riding the lawnmower and he had hobbies such as watching baseball on the TV. As far as the animal kingdom goes, chimpanzees are humans' closest relatives. We share approximately 99% of our DNA with them, so it's not surprising that Travis's very human-like features, behaviour, plus his gentle nature quickly made him quite a celebrity in the neighbourhood. He was considered to be completely tame, almost civilised, and was genuinely well liked by the people who lived near him. One of the neighbours even used to wrestle with Travis for fun. That man would later say, Travis always knew when things were getting out of hand and he knew when to stop. The problem with keeping a chimpanzee as a pet, even one as playful as Travis, is that their skeletal structure and muscle to body ratio means that chimpanzees are much stronger than humans. As well as getting stronger, Travis also showed certain other changes as he got older. His behaviour became more aggressive. He began to throw tantrums in public and eventually the Herald stopped taking Travis out. Allegedly Sandra was approached by Stamford's animal control officer who expressed grave concerns. The officer explained that Travis was becoming a fully sexualised adult and that male chimpanzees are known for their unpredictable and violent outbursts. Sandra however dismissed these concerns, claiming that Travis had never shown any signs of violence and so life with Travis continued as normal. Then, on April 21st, 2005, Jerry Herald passed away from stomach cancer. At this point, Sandra considered sending Travis back to the animal sanctuary, but ultimately she decided against it. Travis remained at home. By 2009, Travis was 14 years old. He was also morbidly obese, and he hadn't left the house for the past three years. At that time, Sandra Herald was 70 years old and she'd found it increasingly difficult to look after Travis. With this lack of proper care, Travis's behaviour was becoming unpredictable. Then, on February the 16th, Travis stole Sandra's car keys and escaped from the house. She tried various methods to lure the chimpanzee back home, but nothing seemed to work. In desperation, Sandra called her friend Charla Nash to come and help. Travis knew Charla very well, she was a frequent visitor to the house, however this day was different. It's speculated that it was because Charla had a new haircut, Travis might have been confused by this, but when she turned up and attempted to lure him back into the house with his favourite toy, Travis flew into a rage. The chimpanzee launched itself at Charla and smashed her against her car. He then pinned her to the ground and began to maul her in the most vicious way possible. Sandra, who was obviously terrified, tried to wedge herself between the two of them, but being 70 years old, she was unable to stop a fully grown chimpanzee. She grabbed a shovel and smashed Travis over the head several times, but it seemed to have no effect whatsoever. 
She then ran into the house and grabbed the butcher's knife and used it to stab Travis repeatedly. Still though, no matter how many times she stabbed the chimpanzee, nothing stopped its attack on Charla Nash. Eventually, Sandra gave up and decided to call 911. Send the police! What's the problem there? The, the, the chip killed my, my friend! What's the problem with your friend? Oh, please! What's the problem with your friend? I need to know. Send the police up! With a gun! With a gun! Is the monkey still by your friend, or can you get close to your friend? He's eating her. He's eating her. Please. God, oh, please. Okay, I need you to calm down for me. I know it's hard, okay? I know it's hard. But they're going as fast as they can your way, okay? Oh, my God. Please. Please. Tell them they got to shoot him because I tried stabbing him, and he's not, and it made him worse. When the police arrived, they discovered a horrific sight. A bloodied and broken Charla Nash lying motionless on the floor with a manic chimpanzee standing over her. The police had no choice. They shot Travis and killed him. A toxicology report later showed that on the day of the attack, Travis had been given Xanax, an anti-anxiety medication. Sandra had initially denied administering this drug, likely because she lacked a prescription for it. Xanax can induce paradoxical reactions, including hallucinations, aggression and rage. It is possible that this drug, combined with Charla's new appearance, triggered Travis's violent outburst. As for Charla Nash, she miraculously survived. Although she had sustained horrific injuries, Travis had basically eaten her face. Her nose, eyes and lips had been torn off. Her mid-face bone structure was shattered and her jaw was nearly torn off also. She also suffered significant brain injuries and lost nine of her fingers. When she was sent for surgery, the surgeons had to remove Travis's teeth that were embedded in her face. Charla's injuries were so horrific that the hospital staff required counselling after seeing her. Sandra Herald passed away in 2010 from a brain aneurysm. At the time, the legal proceedings regarding Travis's attack were still ongoing. Charla Nash underwent a series of reconstructive surgeries, including a full face transplant. Despite losing her sights and going through what is possibly one of the most traumatic things a human could ever go through, she remains a remarkably happy person and seems to have a very positive attitude to life. Our next case is the Joe family tiger incident. On July the 23rd, 2016, the Zhou family visited the Badaling Wildlife Park in Beijing, China. This is a sort of safari park situation where you drive your car around enclosures with wild animals walking around you. In the car were four members of the Zhou family. As far as I can tell, the family members haven't been named by the press, but in the car were a husband and wife, their child and the wife's mother. The park issues warnings to never leave the vehicle, particularly in the Siberian tiger enclosure. Unfortunately, sometimes these warnings are disregarded. Siberian tigers are among the most formidable predators on Earth. They are the largest of all the tiger subspecies. They can weigh over 300 kilograms and their claws measure around 4 inches in length. Their bite force can exert a pressure of over 1,000 pounds. To put this into perspective, it's stronger than that of a grizzly bear. And these were the animals that were walking freely around the Joe family's car as it decided to stop. We know this because CCTV footage of the incident was later released. Bizarrely, Mrs. Joe decides to get out of the car and wander around to the driver's side. I've heard some people suggest that at this point she's berating the driver, 
I can't really tell what she's doing. Seems very strange behaviour, especially with a bunch of Siberian tigers running around. Oh, and I should also point out one other thing about Siberian tigers, and all big cats really. You should never ever turn your back on one. It triggers their natural predatory instincts, and this young lady was about to find this out. Seconds later, a tiger suddenly appears and pounces on the woman from behind. She appears to be completely unaware of its presence until it's too late. The tiger knocks her down and drags her out of frame in seconds. The driver, who's clearly panicking, appears to be unsure what to do. He gets out of the car and eventually leaves the frame. But then he comes back and the older woman gets out of the vehicle too. And the two of them then run out of frame in a panic. What isn't shown in the video is what happens next. The older woman runs to her daughter's aid, but little did she know that there was another tiger stalking them. You can see a park ranger pulling up seconds before this happens, but even they were too slow to react. A second tiger pounced on the older Mrs. Joe and dragged her away. The park rangers then managed to get in and scare away the tiger and the younger woman was saved. She sustained horrific injuries, but she did survive. Her mother, however, wasn't so lucky. The older Mrs. Joe died from her injuries. The video of the incident sparked a massive backlash against the younger Miss Joe. Countless online comments criticised her reckless behaviour, firmly blaming her for the incident. There were also numerous comments pointing out that Mr. Joe didn't seem to do much to save his wife, although I don't think that's fair, you can't really see what happens off camera and he was trying to fight off two Siberian tigers. Throughout her recovery, Mrs. Joe remained silent despite the continuous criticism. Her father came out and said that the real reason why she had left the car was because of sickness, although this explanation didn't convince anyone and the online attacks continued. When Mrs. Joe had recovered, she tried to claim that the park hadn't warned her to stay in the vehicle and she tried to sue them for 2 million won, which is almost 300,000 US dollars. The park responded by saying that there were clear warning signs saying to stay in the vehicle at all times. They'd also, out of compassion, paid for Mrs. Joe's medical bills. Looking at the video, I can't really see how it's anyone else's fault apart from Mrs. Joe. I don't see how the park can account for pure human stupidity, but there you go. So finally we're going to look at the case of Gypsy the Burmese Python. Jaron Hare had purchased Gypsy at a flea market as a teenager. By 2009, the python had grown to be eight and a half feet in length. Jaron Hare was living with her boyfriend Charles Darnell and her two-year-old daughter Shayana. The couple were heavy drug users and the authorities were aware of it, but very little had been done. Neither of them had a stable job and their lifestyle meant that they couldn't provide for their daughter's needs nor for the eight and a half foot python that they had. Now pythons are constrictor snakes. In the wild they ambush their prey, first latching onto them with their sharp fangs, then coiling their body around the prey and squeezing them tightly until they fall unconscious. They then swallow the body whole. When kept as pets, Burmese pythons have specific requirements for proper care. This includes maintaining a large and secure enclosure, providing the right temperature and humidity levels, and offering a suitable diet. Failing to meet these needs can lead to stress, health issues, and potentially aggressive behaviour. They kept Gypsy in an aquarium with no lid. They draped a quilt over the top of the tank to try and keep Gypsy in, but this method was obviously ineffective. Gypsy would continually escape from the aquarium at will. This was in clear violation of Florida state law, which mandates that pythons be kept under lock and key. Also, they didn't have the necessary permit to keep the python in the first place. Child welfare officers visited the couple and assessed the situation. The report states, small tot, large snake, and a mother unwilling to abstain from drug use for her child's sake. Investigators then concluded that the two-year-old was relatively safe. 
a relative of the family called Cheryl Hare had come to the house and saw the sorry state of the python. She was aware of the couple's financial struggles and she offered to pay for a proper cage for Gypsy. When her offer was rejected, she offered to cover the cost of the snake's food and later even attempted to buy the snake from the couple. All of these offers were shot down and Gypsy remained with her owners. Then, on the night of June 30th, 2009, disaster struck. Charles and Jaron got high, went to bed and fell unconscious. Sometime during the night, Charles woke up and went to use the toilet. As he was walking down the corridor, he stumbled over something. It was Gypsy crawling along the floor. Charles picked up the snake and placed it into a laundry bag, allegedly trying to stop Gypsy from escaping again. He then went back to bed and fell back unconscious. The following morning when he woke up, Charles went in to check on Cheyenne and he made a horrific discovery. Gypsy was coiled around the corpse of the toddler. Cheyenne's body was covered in bite marks and the python had its fangs buried in the child's head. Panicking, Charles grabbed a meat cleaver and he started to hack at the python, trying to force it to release its victim, but it was far too late. Cheyenne had been dead a long time by that point. The Florida Emergency Services received a frantic phone call. A sobbing Charles can be heard on the recording saying, She got out of her cage last night and into the baby's crib and strangled her to death. During the trial, a medical examiner testified that on the day of the attack, Gypsy was severely malnourished, weighing only 13 pounds. A healthy specimen of this species should weigh around 140 pounds. The medical examiner confirmed that the snake hadn't been fed for a month and indeed it was attempting to eat the girl because it was starving. During the trial, Hare and Darnell emphasised their pet's typically tame and friendly behaviour. They said that it hadn't shown any signs of aggression. Both of them received 12 year prison sentences which they've both completed by now and they're currently on supervised probation until 2026. Gypsy the python recovered from her injuries. The state attorney argued in court that the snake isn't at fault in this case. It's a wild animal and the responsibility for the death of the child is purely in Hare and Darnell. Eventually the snake was sent to a US Air Force base and she assisted in training soldiers in survival techniques. So there you go, three horrific animal attacks. In each case though, I'll point out the animal was either being mishandled, mistreated or generally not respected as the potential killer that it is. Although the animals were the aggressors, these attacks are very much the result of human stupidity or cruelty. I hope this was an interesting topic for a video. Let me know in the comments. I could easily make this into a series. Thank you very much for watching anyway and thank you to everyone on Patreon who is supporting the channel. It's been a while since I've uploaded anything but that's because I spent about three weeks working on a video and it was immediately blocked worldwide due to some dubious copyright claim. I'm appealing it and hopefully it'll be on YouTube at some point but until then you can watch an uncut version of it on Patreon. I will put it up on Rumble or Odyssey eventually so it's not behind a paywall forever but uh, yeah I'm just waiting to see if it gets approved on YouTube first so we'll see. Yeah that's where I've been if anyone was wondering. I have been making videos, they're up on YouTube, you just can't see them because of some stupid copyright thing. Annoying but there you go. So thank you to everyone on Patreon for the support, you're really helping me out especially when stuff like that happens. Thank you very much. Anyway, that's enough waffling. Thank you once again for watching. Until next time, goodbye.